games, you guys have been down 14 to seven in each game. How much is the second group when they get in yeah. helping you kind of overcome that? What what have they done to bring you guys back into Yeah, that? especially in the last game, I thought they were really good um, in, in getting us going. Like we're, we're starting the games and especially our perimeter guys, like they're trying to find their way, you know, into the game through shooting. And sometimes when you make one or you get into a little bit of a rhythm or you're just wide open, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. But <clears throat> we've had a couple four shots, um, you know, to start the game. And, um, you know, we have to do a better job of just getting good looks and then living with that, right? Like, even if you miss those, like, you know, you still, you know, stay process based, keep taking good shots. But our bench is the one that's really sparked us. I, I thought they were great in the Duke game, you know, coming in and getting it going. And then when the starters came back in, they played really well. The inevitable question just about, you know, the trip west. Now you got to load mm -hmm. up and play again. Yeah. What's your message to your guys? Well, you know, you like you get back and, you know, you land around 4.15, 4.30 in the morning on Monday. And, uh, you know, we practice probably for about an hour, um, a little bit later in the afternoon. So we, we, we didn't go to normal 2 o'clock. We went at 4 o'clock. It just tried to get started on the scout, but also, you know, get moving a little bit. When you travel like that, you know, I, I think it's it's difficult, but it's also, you know, you gotta play another game. That's just the way it is, like, you know, deal with it. And, um, you know, I think our guys are, you know, focused and, you know, ready to go, but, you know, we, we also don't know, right? We haven't played a road game this year. We have young guys that haven't played a road game. And even though we played on a neutral court and played Gonzaga in that area, it still wasn't like playing you know, on the road playing versus Gonzaga or playing on the road um, and you know, playing Duke. So, um, you know, this will be this will be a challenge for us. I know they're not having their best year, but they still have good individual pieces. Um, they just they just haven't got it together yet. Um, but they, you know, they got a handful of guys that, that can really go and, and we got to be prepared. From what you've seen, why why are they in this one and seven run? Just not completing things. You know, they, they just not consistent in certain areas. Um, but they show spurts. You know, they have they have a good first half against Florida. Um, they they put together good spurts. That just just that consistency. You know, just trying to sustain that consistency across the board. And they, you know, they've lost some close games um, at home, and people have shot the ball well. You know, against them. Um, but with that being said, they also have two guys that are out. They have one guy that's going to miss half the season for eligibility purposes, and they have another guy that's injured. So that might be the bigger probably the better answer. I can only go off what I watch. I don't obviously know those two guys. Um, but that's the, the, those two guys being out. And then just, you know, sometimes it takes a little bit of time to, you know, to piece everything together, especially if you're getting into close games and being able to win those close games. Brady, you talked about, so told us that Zach sent the team a text last night about making sure you keep doing the same thing that you've been doing to be successful. Right. Yeah. Did he run that by you? Did you yeah. know about that? It's like, what, what do you think? Well, it's, that? it's all right. Common sense is all right. You don't forget, <laughs> you know, common sense is okay to, uh, kind of when you have guys that have been through things and understand it, it happens a lot in competition within a game not just from game to game, whereas like you get a lead and you do good things and then you get away from, you know, human nature, sometimes winning's not good enough, you know, because a lot of people want to play and do more to help you win. It's just very normal and natural, but you really just need to do the same things. If you're having success, why would you go against it? So, but no, that's good. That's good that he's, he's sending that because he's right. Uh, last year for the challenge, uh, what would you like to see the Big Ten do moving forward? Is there another challenge yeah. out, out there? Or is, yeah, does well, this give you a little bit more control over your scheduling and what you want to do in the future? It gives you more control, but it doesn't probably give us a better game across the board. Like individually, there's teams in our league that can go get a game that's just as good. But can we go and get, you know, 14 to 16 games consistently with this one pocket? Um, I would say no. I, I would say no, just because it would, by nature, especially a coach, especially an older coach, you know, is going to normally schedule somebody lesser. It's just kind of the way it is. And in reality, if you can get consistent, especially if you can be as consistent as someone like Michigan State, you should schedule like Michigan State.
because it not only helps Michigan State, but it helps our league. Because um, if, you, if you're fortunate enough to beat them, that win really helps because they have such a strong net across the board because these schedules so tough. If you can get more people doing that in your league, you're going to grow your league and you're going to get more teams in the tournament. So you just go out and schedule Florida State for a home and home now since yeah. you played them so much. Yeah, we're, we're we're trying to complete the seven game <laughs> Eastern Conference Finals, best of seven. Yeah, yeah it's amazing. So. Yeah, if, if they could continue that and continue the Gavit games, I just hope we'll just play Marquette and Florida State. <laughs> yeah. is, is this team where you thought it was going to be defensively at, at this point in the season? Um, we, we still make a lot of mistakes. We, we, we still have breakdowns um, with it. The thing that we haven't struggled with is our effort. Mm -hmm. You know, we've played hard. When the ball's gotten loose, um, outside of the Marquette game, we've really rebounded the ball well and really pursued the basketball for 50-50 balls. And so I think that's where we offset some of our deficiencies. Um, a lot of our deficiencies is concentration. Like, you know, you have to know what you're doing. You, you got to be able to get it. And, and we're much better in that area. We were still having some breakdowns. I don't know if there's a team out there not having those breakdowns. So you just kind of grow through it and just try to, you know, keep getting a little bit better, keep getting a little bit more stingy, um, you know, leading into conference play. You said after the Gonzaga game that you made a lot of mistakes. Did you make as many against Duke? Or, I mean, the ones that we don't always see? Or did, you, or did right. you limit that? No, I thought we we did a better job there. Now it's a different scout. Yeah. Um, so I thought we did a better job there. I thought Caleb first really came in. His ball screen defense was pretty good. He really got out there and hedged high, and that really helped us. Um, then his ability to rebound really helped us. So. Um, not to say he was the only one out there, but we're, we're, we're just more aware than we were. Mm -hmm. And I know we always compare things to the previous team, and I don't always like that, but that's part of it. Um, but yeah, that's kind of where we are in terms of something can happen, and we got a better chance of all five guys being connected and understand what's going on than we did. Do you update on Cam? No. Okay. <laughs> Last question on, on the comparison to last year, just the experience of being ranked where you are. I know you mm -hmm. just live on those rankings on a daily basis, but uh, in all seriousness, what uh, you know, what, what lessons do you think this team can learn from the guys that were involved last yeah, year and et cetera? It really kind of goes back to what I just said. Like it's, you know, just being locked in and concentrate um, and, and doing our job. Like, you know, each game's different. Like, you know, you have to be able to go into a game and understand you're going to get, you know, people's best shot. And I, I don't know if we quite grasp that. I don't know if our capacity was there to even grasp it. But, like, that's just kind of human behavior, right? It's just natural that, you know, hey, they, they beat Gonzaga, they beat Duke. Like, you know, we got to be ready. And now you get somebody who's a little bit more sharp because they see the success that you've had. Well, the people that are having that kind of success, like, you know, you got to have the capacity to get it too, right? And just be ready to play and be ready to compete and, and understand what you're, you know, what you have to do, but also understand it's a different game and a different style against Florida State. You know, you got to make some adjustments and you got to be strong with the ball and um, athletic, <coughs> fast, you know, so you got to be able to keep the ball in front of you. Just uh, to this point in the season, um, what have you liked about Brandon Newman impacting games in, in ways that are, you know, not him? Yeah, yeah good. Well. Like, I, I think he's been better defensively. I know he's been better defensively. He's rebounded the basketball. So those are good things, you know. Um, if he just would take things that come his way, you know, that would really help. It would really help his cause. When he just takes things that come his way, you know, now getting the ball inside, you know, if you can defend and rebound and get the ball inside for us and now you're a threat and you're just out there, you know, opportunities will come your way. I think that's been proven. You know, Zach gets a lot of attention. Braden gets a lot of attention with his ability to dribble and break people down. And now when you're skilled in both of those scenarios, you know, you're going to get some things. And so, like, he tries to get it a lot of times right away. Like, he tries right as he comes in. He tries, you know, and you got to be able to, to kind of get into the game. Now, sometimes he, he makes those, and then sometimes he doesn't. Um, so, but that that's more of... of his defense is better, his rebounding is better, just letting things come to him. You know, if he can do that, that would really help him, help his cause. Talking about Caleb and ball screen defense, is it, the, those hard hedges, is that something you would have trusted him with last year, or is it something he developed? Yeah, right we didn't do as much of it last year. We, we, we switched more and just tried to knock out um, the action 
uh, and not let people get that kind of action with it. We, we've went to more of a flat hedge this year, and then we just thought against Duke that we had to kind of push back on James Roach a little bit. We were scared of Filipowski popping and making plays. So we really tried to get in there and get in those gaps. And we got a, we got one steal off of it. Uh, and then, you know, it's making it hard for him to get the ball back at that point. But it's hard once you get out there on those hedges um, sometimes to get back if that guard makes a good read. So that's – we just thought that was so important to, to get out there, especially on Roach, and, and get those hedges and get out there and push the ball back some.